Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 20 to 26 of section 3 of the Green Booklet. There's quite a lot of information given for this, and I've written down everything that I think is um, useful if you already know how chromatography works, but if not, you should probably read up on the, the paper chromatography method that's given here. I've copied out the diagram, and it means we can start by answering question 20, which asks uh, the R1 value of cysteine on this paper is what in each solvent. So we've been told what the equation is for R1 in case you already didn't know it. And in this case, it's just a matter of counting the squares and finding the ratios. So for S, um, we're going to be looking at cysteine, which is this one here. Uh, I'm using shorthand for this just to make it a little bit easier to read. So CYS is cysteine. So for S, the distance traveled by, by the compound is going to be six centimeters. And the distance traveled by the solvent is 15. So that gives us a ratio of two over five and a decimal of 0.4. So that already tells us the answer is C, but just for completeness, we can mark out what it is in T. Um, so the distance traveled in solvent T is gonna be three squares and it moved along 12 centimeters. And that gives us a ratio of 1 over 4, which is 0.25, and that just confirms that the answer for this one is C. Just a reminder that uh, solvent S is moving up in this direction, and solvent T is moving along in this direction, and it only gets to 12 centimeters here. 21 says in figure 1, the highest R1 value for the following amino acids is what? Okay, so we're looking at leucine and phenylalanine. Uh, leucine I've simplified to LEU and phenylalanine is PHE. So we can see that they are here, leucine and phenylalanine here. Okay, so we just need to work out the R1 for each of these and each of the solvents. So let's look at leucine first um, in solvent S. We can make a table. Leucine travels um, 13 and a half squares up, sorry, 13 squares up, and in S. 13 over 15, therefore, is going to be the ratio. Uh, phenylalanine moves 13.5 over 15. So this uh, is probably a difficult decimal to work out, but I, I know in my head it's at least, let's say, not 0.8, definitely, and we can work out what exactly it is later on if we need to. In solvent T, uh, we're going to look at leucine now, which has moved across 9 out of the 12 centimetres. And phenylalanine has done 8 out of the 12. So we're looking for the highest one, so we know that these two are going to be lower. And of course this one's lowest, and that leaves us with phenylalanine travelling in S, which means that the answer for 21 is going to be C as well. If you look at question 22 then, it says an amino acid in figure two, or in figure one, sorry, has the same R1 value in both solvents, S and T. Uh, which one is it? So remember, S and T travel two different distances, so we're looking for the same R1 value for both. Um, looking at the first option, glycine, we can see that in S, it went across, or it went up five centimeters out of the 15, which of course can be a third. And in T, it went across four centimeters out of the 12, which is gonna be a third as well. So actually this, the first one we tried, has the same R1 value for both solvents. So the answer for this one is gonna be A, which is nice, that saves us some time. 23 then says, four amino acids are found to have the same R1 values for solvent X but different R1 values for solvent Y. If an experiment such as that described at the start of this unit was carried out on a mixture of these four amino acids, it would most likely to appear on a paper chrom chromatograph as what. And we're given a few different options, which I haven't drawn out because I'd rather explain um, what this means if you weren't able to get it. So imagine this is the, the paper, just like we were doing with before, and the start is here. If solvent X is moving up this way, and they all have the same solubility in solvent X, they'll all move the same distance up. 
if they all have the same solubility in y, and I'll just draw another one, say y is moving in this direction, they'll all end up moving um, the same length of the way across. Now, in this example, they say solvent x is moving up and they all have the same uh, solubility in solvent x, but different solubilities in solvent y, and that's why we get this distribution in this direction, because of the different solubilities. That means that the answer for number 23 is going to be d, which is the one that looks a bit like this. If you look at 24 then, it says five amino acids and they're named are mixed and a spot of the mixture placed in the starting position of another piece of the same type of absorbent paper as was illustrated in figure one. In order to completely separate the five amino acids in this mixture, which solvents need to be used? So this is taking the last question, taking it a step further and seeing if any two have moved the same direction by the same amount, in which case they have the same solubility in that solvent and it's not a way to separate them out. So they're named here as alanine, glycine, lysine, serine, and threonine. So I'm going to change the color of them so that we can see them a little bit clearer. So alanine is here. Uh, we have glycine. Lysine is here. Serine. And threonine, which is here. Okay. So we can immediately see that lysine and alanine have the same solubility in S because they follow this same line here. They travel the same distance up. Couldn't get it to stick exactly on the axis, but you can see that they have the same solubility in S. So if you used S, it wouldn't separate them out. But looking at the vertical lines, none of them share one of the vertical lines, and it means they all have different solubilities in T. So if you just use T, it would, solve it, it would separate them out okay. So that means the answer for this one is to use solvent T. And that means for 24 then, I'll add it down here. The answer for 24 has to be just solvent T, which is uh, B in this case. 25 says, consider these two statements concerning the amino acids shown in figure one. And I'll scroll back up so we can see what we're looking at. And I'll zoom in so we can see it clearer. I'll get rid of um, this line. Tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent S than does threonine. And tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent T than does threonine. Again, I think it's worth colouring it so we know what we're looking at. So I'm going to colour these ones in green. I hope this isn't getting confusing with too many colours. But we're looking at these two and we're saying about their relative uh, solubility. So tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent S, which means it's more soluble. So if it moves further up uh, the paper, then it has a greater affinity. For S. And we can see in this case it definitely does uh, move further up. So it has a greater affinity. So, so statement one is true. Tyrosine has a greater affinity for solvent T than just threonine. Again, same principle applies. Uh, if it was more soluble or had a greater affinity for T, it would move further right. And we can see threonine move further right. So statement two is false. That means that the answer for 25 is also going to be B. And then 26 says, consider these three statements considering lysine and two solvents, S and T. So lysine, this is our final one, so I'll circle it. Lysine is this one we're looking at. And it says, there's three statements here, so let's go through them. Lysine has a greater affinity for solvent S than for the paper. So let's think about what it would mean to have an affinity for the paper. Um, it's really a lack of solubility for the solvent. Um, either one or the other. You could think of it like that. If it has a greater affinity for the solvent, it'll move more than halfway up the paper, which means its R1 value will be more than 0.5, essentially. And then lysine having a greater affinity for the paper means its R1 value would be less than 0.5. The other way you can think about it is whether or not it moves more than halfway um, the distance that the solvent does. So number one, it says lysine is greater affinity for solvent S than for the paper. And we can see that's true because it's moved more than halfway up the scale. Lysine has a greater affinity for solvent T than for the paper. Well, that's not very true because um, it only went one centimetre in that direction, whereas T went 12 centimetres. So its R value will be less than 0.5. And so it has a greater affinity for the paper than for solvent T. So number two is false. And the third one says lysine has a greater affinity for solvent S than for solvent T. 
and you could sit and work out the R1 values, but I think it's fairly obvious that three is definitely true. Um, so one and three are true, but two isn't. So that means that the answer for 26 is going to be D. So that was questions 20 to 26 of section three, a pretty tough chromatography question, but I hope that helps.